Thanks very much. Welcome, everyone. It is great to see you. So, uh, in 2016, I came across a friend in the hallway at the office. You know, this was at a time when there were still people at the office that you could actually run into. And I said, hey, how's it going? What are you doing? What are you working on? And he said, uh, we're working on this translation component that translates, doesn't exactly matter what, um, and, and uh, it's, how's it, go? how's it going? It's going really well. And I said, have you talked to your office neighbors right next door? Because I think they are also working on the translation component. And he said, yes, actually we have. Um, and, and, and yeah, it's very similar. And I said, well, and then what did you do? I said, you know, so we sat down and uh, we figured out if we just combine our efforts, if we make our component a little bit more general, uh, then we could only develop one component and we could both use it. So it would save us a lot of time and, and, and effort. And I said, oh, great. So uh, how is that coming along? How is, how is that working out for you? Because at that time, I was already one of the people running around in the office evangelizing inner source because we weren't doing that at all at the time. And uh, so I would go to department meetups and, and uh, uh, office gatherings and say, hey, guys, we need to do inner source and so forth, right? So I said, so how is that going? How is that working out for you and the other team? And I said, well, you know, so um, uh, we went to our product owners, the two product owners, one in that business unit and the other one in another business unit far away in the big uh, corporation. And uh, so we told them and, and they said, oh, that, you know, that is a really good idea. We could save time and money. And, uh, right. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, but we still don't want you to do this. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, you know, then, then we would actually have to talk to these guys a lot. And there would be a lot of communication effort and overhead. And, and maybe then they have different ideas. And, and we have the budget. You know, we don't need to save money. <laughs> Uh, okay, but that's terrible, right? Uh, saves the whole company time and money. It's like, no, no, don't do it. So, okay, we're not doing this. It's like, wow. Okay, now in their defense, you also have to say, as I said, we weren't really doing uh, inner source and open source at the time. And so there were a lot of unresolved legal issues, you know, and they didn't want to be at the forefront. They didn't want to be the first ones to figure this out. And, and, and so, okay, so it, it went nowhere, right? And so this is a terrible example, right, of how it should not be done. But um, so me and others were evangelizing inner source and open source more and more. Yeah, and while we're at it, let's do open source also, right? And this finally reached the very top, the CIO and the CEO of our company of Mercedes-Benz. And they finally said, yeah, this is, we, we have to do this. We have to invest in open source. And so it was taken into our official IT strategy, you know, so now it's there and, uh, and that is really good, right? So. The first step in the, you know, all the steps that you maybe need to do is uh, create internal awareness that this is something that you need to do. And uh, oh yeah, as a, as a computer scientist, I get away with uh, starting enumerations with zero. You know, computer scientists count zero, one, and that's two, right? Okay, but what I want is, it's a prerequisite, basically. Create that internal awareness, and then hopefully you can uh, really start with it. And really start means maybe you should start with creating an open source program office. An open source program office is basically the institutionalized version of what you may have been doing anyway. You know, you do a little bit of open source here and there, and, but it's not a combined effort. It's something that you need to concentrate in one spot. Here are the people that are responsible for it and, and that combine all the... All the uh, the non-central efforts, right? So here's a couple of nice quotes that I really like. So whether you know it yet or not, open source is at the center of your business and you're probably doing it already anyway. Uh, so you might as well do it right, okay? Doing it right means uh, with an open source office. And so here are typical tasks of an open source program office. Some people call it just open source office or open source program office. At Mercedes-Benz, the mother company, we call it center of competence, FOSS, C-O-C, 
But then at conferences, we always have, so that's what we call our OSPO internally. Okay. So uh, it is, you know, combine, combine all the efforts into one office, one centralized platform, and define a corporate open source strategy for one to like really not do it randomly, but do it right. And here are the steps that you need to do. Uh, define policy and rules, because as much as we don't like policy and rules, we will uh, definitely need them. Right? Then the processes, tools, obviously. Um, trainings, I will get to that. I will get to each of these points. Community management, then open source publication, membership and foundations. And uh, external visibility, maybe give a talk at a conference. Right? <laughs> okay, so uh, here, this is a typical example of how an open source program office uh, could look. This is the open source program office at Mercedes-Benz Tech Innovation. That's my home base. Uh, we're in 100% IT subsidiary of Mercedes-Benz AG, the big corporation. And we work very, very closely together with the open source office at Mercedes-Benz. So typically, uh, you have some organizational staff that help you with uh, organiza well, organization. Yeah. Then you need governance. It's kind of the foundation. You know, we all know there are um, licenses and, and rules. You can't just do open source, whatever that means, right? Uh, you have to pay heed to these rules because grave consequences can ensue if you don't. So you need governance experts on that. Then on top, we have community management, something that sometimes is overlooked in some companies. Um, but it's definitely one of the one of the big important cornerstones, because you know think about what it, what really is a successful open source project. A project that probably a lot of people use, and contribute to, and where there is a large community of people that care about this project, and a lot of times people think, well, if my project is good, you know, the community will um, come into existence by itself, and that is just not the case. Right? You need to do some work around this. Like. So you need community management experts, and then obviously it's an IT topic, so you need technical expertise as well. Then we have uh, the OSPO lead, uh, that's me for the MBTI, and then what a very important uh, part are our FOSS coordinators. They're our link to the business units, because we can't have, um, you know, we can't take care of everyone that has a question about FOSS individually. We would love to, but it's just too much. And so the business, uh, the coordinators are our link into the business streams or business units, if you will. Right? So we meet with them on a very regular basis and we exchange uh, information with them. It's like, what's going on in your business unit? Tell us what, are, what, are, what do you need? And then here are news from the OSPO. Please carry them on into your business unit. Okay, so these... I. Is a, is a good concept that works quite well. All right, so the next step for us was embrace FOSS. We said, we don't want to just use, we want to fully embrace all aspects of FOSS. And now what does that even mean? What is embrace FOSS? Um, so the first one, the first thing here is use. We use open source software in the development of our own software. Uh, remember that buying third party software can also mean that it contains open source. And uh, this also means use, okay? So if a company says, we don't do that, are you sure? Because maybe yeah, I think you probably do, All right? So that's use. Then the next uh, step would be contribute. So um, during your development, maybe you find a bug in an open source library, contribute back, right? Tell them, hey, here's a bug, here's my fix. Or at least, I think there's a problem there, maybe, you know, create an issue, somebody can solve this maybe, if it's not you, better if it is you, but, all right. Um, so contribute back, that's the second step. And the third step would be publish some of your own stuff as open source, okay? Um, and embrace FOSS means all of these plus more. I will get to the plus more part. So we're like, okay, we're not just using and being a freeloader. We want to really be a useful community member and we want to go all in on FOSS. Um, 
talk about use for a second. I probably preaching to the choir because after all, we're at the full spec stage, right? But um, so Synopsys, these are you guys that uh, have uh, created Black Duck. Uh, they, they do the open source security and risk analysis report. And then the last one last year, they found that 97% of all the code bases they audited contained open source software. 78% of that code was actually, was open source. Only 22% was the own created code, right? And uh, so for us here is the aerospace aviation auto industry. Here is 97% is the same number, but then 60% of the total code was made of open source. Message, you just can't do open source. With, uh, you just can't um, uh, do software, develop software without open source anymore these days, right? And uh, here, a little side note, this is also security and risk analysis report. 60% of the code they looked at had open source vulnerabilities, right? I'm not going to get into that. Just this is a thing, you know, you need to pay attention to that as well. Okay. So then contribute and create is it's about giving back. Yes. You know, you don't want to be a freeloader only, but it's not just giving back because if that's all there is to it, you know, when the economic times get tough, that's the first thing that gets cut is like, oh, we just want to give back to the community and be nice. You know, that's like in tough economic times, you can't do that. But there is a lot more to it than that. So there is a um, study at Harvard Business School done by Frank Nagel, and he found out that companies who actively contribute back benefit twice as much from open source participation than compared to companies who only use, right? Why is that? Because essentially, when you contribute, you go through a feedback process with the community, with some of the brightest minds out there in computer science, in software development. And this feedback process is basically like an internal training program. And you keep learning and learning and get better and better. Okay, And this isn't a one-time effect only that merely occurs at the beginning. This will keep on going as you go along. So this is a great reason to contribute back if it's not just about giving back, right? Okay, so um, we wanted to convince some of our senior management staff that this is really a great thing because now we had it in our IT strategy, fine. But it wasn't really happening yet, right? So we wanted to convince them, hey, embrace FOSS. It's great. And uh, so we went to the IT senior management meeting a couple years ago, and we had a like half hour slot. We did a FOSS workshop. And um, so this is once a year, our CIO, this, the guy here behind me, that's our CIO, Jan Brecht from Mercedes-Benz. And uh, he really likes FOSS, so he's a great advocate. And he said, here, you have half an hour, tell my senior management staff why this is important. Okay, so we did a little video that says, uh, that gives you all the advantages. And um, this is two minutes. I'm going to show this to you. And uh, here, sit back and listen. So why should you embrace FOSS in your team? Well, for one, he really likes FOSS, so you can make him happy. But that shouldn't be the real reason behind it. Let me give you some pointers. Innovation nowadays happens to a large degree in the FOSS domain. Therefore, doing FOSS can speed up our access to innovative technologies to be at the forefront where automotive goes digital. Second, with FOSS, we are achieving a much higher efficiency in software development. It fosters reuse and it's cheaper and easier on your engineer. You save yourself time and money and you can go faster and faster. And this will give us the freedom to focus even more on our USPs. Also, it's in your own best interest. By being active in FOSS, and not only use it, you can steer open source projects in the direction you need them. Contributions are the currency of open source. It is how you provide influence to the project your business depends on. And what's even more, our FOSS endeavors help us to attract new talent. We need software engineers. That's a fact. 
and they are attracted to open source like a moth to a flame. Trust me on this. Plus, participating in open source is like a continuous internal training program for the engineers that we already have, as has been proven in a Harvard study. Our engineers will learn and get better and better. And this isn't a one-time effect only, which merely occurs at the beginning. The advantages of the learning process will keep going on over and over and over again. Well, I can think of at least 10 more good reasons why you should be active in FOSS. Bottom line is, for software development, FOSS is like the air you breathe. You need it. And that's all there is to it. So please, open. Open up as much as you can, because it makes us all so much better. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, um, in case you weren't able to pay attention to all the things I said, because I get that feedback. Yeah, I couldn't listen to what I was watching what you were doing. So here are all the points again. I won't go over them again, but I'll probably provide the slides later, right? So, um, yeah, so that video kind of stuck into people's minds. It's like, I don't remember what you said, but then, and then they can go back and look at the points, okay? So, um, yeah, embracing FOSS has many benefits. With FOSS, you can do magic. I kind of believe that's true. So this was Embrace FOSS, and now the next thing is, we had it in the IT strategy, we created funny videos, but does that mean people will still do it? It will help, but we also thought we needed to do something that's a bit more radical than just you know, having it in the strategy on some slides. So what we did is we created our Mercedes-Benz FOSS manifesto. So this is a set of guidelines and rules uh, which say, hey, we don't only want you to use FOSS, we want you to fully embrace all aspects of it. And uh, in case you are wondering, am I even allowed to do this in my working time? Here's the answer, yes, you are. Um, so it has three parts, preamble, uh, company principles, and the employee principles. I'm gonna go over them real quick. I'm gonna skip the uh, preamble for now. But uh, so here are the company principles. And so the principle number one says, uh, Mercedes-Benz shall support and encourage its employees to use, contribute to, and create FOSS projects, both in open and inner source endeavors. I mean, I realize that FOSS means free and open source and in open is kind of a contradiction, but that was, the, we chuggle around with so many wordings. I think this is actually good. <laughs> now, years and years ago, some of our engineers when we didn't have the policy in place yet and all the rules, you know, they would uh, go home, create a pull request to a project that they were using at work, do this in their free time so they could use it on the next morning in their work. And that is wrong, right? It's not covered by working laws for one. And plus, you know, if you do something that benefits the company, it's probably your working time, all right? So principle number two says, please, do this in your working time. Yes, you are allowed to take this time to contribute and to participate in FOSS activities. Okay, learning and advancement. I think that needs no explanation. Obviously, you know, go to conferences because it's a great platform to exchange with people and communities. Please participate actively. Okay, and so here, this is this was the company principle that says Mercedes will give you the time for FOSS. You have the right to do FOSS in your working time. And employee principles here, they ask of our engineers, be active, right? Not just like use, but seriously, you know, be there. Um, look for open and inner source alternatives before you write code of your own. Don't reinvent the wheel again and again. Um, here, inner source, be active there. Please be active in open source. And this is sort of a mini code of conduct. Uh, be nice, okay? Um, you can find the open source manifesto for Mercedes-Benz on our landing page. So here, opensource.mercedesbenz.com. And then uh, here is the manifesto. You can read it more thoroughly. You can download it. It has a pointer to the GitHub repository where you can see it. We have placed it under Creative Commons Zero License, so the least restrictive license. Uh, you can use it 
if you say, hey, that's a nice blueprint, I'm going to take that and alter it, that's fine. You can do with anything that you like. And you don't have to attribute us either. Okay. And uh, so Continental, for example, here are two people from Continental. They have just recently published the Continental FOSS manifesto as well, which I think is a great move. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, so yeah, have a look. This is the FOSS manifesto. Then the next thing is train your employees. Uh, when you do open source, you know, there are rules and guidelines and there are also explanations. What does that even mean? Here, we created a set of trainings for our employees. So awareness is just basic. Yeah. What is even FOSS? Then what to take, what to keep in mind when you use FOSS, contribute, create. Our employees, when they contribute to an open source project, they have to take this training. It's about one hour. It's really nicely done. We even got an award for it, uh, for, for this, the set of trainings. And we call it the driver's license. You know, we're a car manufacturer. So, um, And then when, once they have done this training, that's it. They are fine to go. You know, They don't have to get approval for every contribution. Because I hear in some companies that's the case. No, that's it. You know, Do the training. You're set. Now, there are a lot of open source trainings out there already. Some of the foundations, Lynx Foundation, for example, provides open source trainings. This is not you know, the same just with Mercedes branding, uh, but this is Mercedes specific things. Okay? And if you have more questions about the trainings, here's Anna. Anna, here, she's uh, our main training person, right? She uh, helped develop most of these trainings, or all of them, actually, I think. Yeah. And uh, recently, we added the inner source driver's license if you want to participate in inner source activities. All right? Now, what's next here? Foundations and sponsorships. Um, I talked about giving back, which is a nice thing, but we also have a vested interest that all the popular open source projects that we use will still be there tomorrow. So we have decided that we create a fund and we actually pay money to open source projects um, through GitHub sponsors. We are planning to add uh, open source collective haven't gotten around to doing it yet, but it's, it's in the making. So uh, if you go to our website now, the GitHub page, you will see a different number because you know, the, some, some expire and some are added. If you go there in a couple of weeks, we're just uh, kicking off our fourth round of sponsorships and you should see a, a larger number there in the next uh, couple of weeks. Okay, so I think this is a great thing actually. And Spotify is doing the same thing, right, the pair? <laughs> So this is, I hope that more and more companies will follow our example. And uh, then I think this really is something that can change the world, the open source world. Yeah. We are also members of the Eclipse Foundation, strategic members. We have recently also as a strategic member joined the Software Defined Vehicle Working Group, STV Software Defined Vehicle, which I think is going to be a great thing. Uh, then we're members of the Linux Foundation, Cloud Native Computing, and a, a few more. So I think the foundations are doing a great job. So look into foundation memberships yourself, perhaps. All right. And uh, the last step here is have fun by making funny videos, for example. And I have another video that's only one minute that I'll show you. But um, maybe actually, I think I'll take a couple of questions first, uh, then leave two minutes at the end, and then uh, to finish up this year. Yeah, OK. but. Uh, Let's, let's go for some questions first. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, cool. We have one question there in the back. Yeah, thanks for the great talk. Um, look, I understand that you actually showed that a certain percentage, 60% uh, is open, but there's also a percentage that is closed. And I can imagine you as a company that has competitors, you do need to also have some closed software. So how do you define what is going to be open and what's going to be closed? Okay, thanks. So um, th things that are, that give us a competitive advantage is closed. You know, for example, uh, an algorithm that contributes to autonomous driving. That's how we want to sell cars. That's our, you know, yeah, sales pitch. Drive Mercedes. Huh? Do you have some guidelines for that? Or how do you yes, yes. So uh, in these trainings, you know, you get the guidelines what is open and what is not. So 
if you publish something as open source, either just by a contribution or publish your own open source project, make sure there are no, there's no internal information, you know, no secrets, obviously, passwords, server names, things like that. And also, please check, are you violating any patents, potentially, then check again. Um, for I principle, at least, and if you do open source, you have to get a sign off as well, you know, you have to sh show this to your manager to make sure that you don't give away company secrets. Yeah. So that's, that's, yeah. Okay. Thank you. We have another question here. Hi, thanks for your talk. Um, I'm, I'm a bit biased with this question, but uh, I'm curious, how do you manage non-code open source contributions like uh, localization, text, design? Um, do you have any of these and what's your experience with that? Yeah, so a lot of people think, well, I'm not a, I'm not a coder. I, don't, I can't contribute anything to open source. And we're telling them, no, there, you know, a lot of projects want non-code contributions as well. And they're quite happy if you fix their documentation or what you mentioned, right? Um, so it's the same thing. If you contribute, you have to do these trainings. But as I said, they're actually nice and they're only, each is about one hour. So, but they're managed in the same way. Yeah, make sure if you contribute open source, you know, code of conduct, look at what the project does, uh, read their contribution guidelines and things like this. Yeah? All right. Great. Um, okay, maybe one Susie has question. A question. Thank you. So, uh, sponsoring the projects that you actually use and depend on is great and it should be common sense for everyone. Um, as a big automotive company uh, like we are, where do you get the budget from? Is it centralized? Can business units decide on their own what they want to sponsor or how, how do you solve that? So, it's potentially both meaning anyone, any project can sponsor an open source project if they provide their budget. Then we, you know, they approach us and we just tell them, hey, this is how you do it. Actually quite easy. Um, so far that hasn't happened yet. I'm having a talk with a colleague next week and he said, we from our business unit want to sponsor an open source project. So this may be the first time. But uh, up until now, we have collected money from a few business units from Mercedes-Benz corporate IT enterprise IT from research and development and from MBTI, Mercedes-Benz Tech Innovation. And uh, so each um, has paid a chunk. And then we put this in one big, big uh, uh, money fund. And then from there, so, it's, so this is the centralized approach. And we hope that the more and more we do this and the more and more we talk about it, more and more business units will follow suit and say, oh, we will do sponsoring. Yeah. I have a bit of a fear that the exact opposite is going to happen because they say, oh, you have to centralize budget, then I don't need to take my money, right? So I don't know yet, but uh, we'll hopefully be able to do, keep, keep going with this. Yeah. Great. So we're all curious now um, about your final video. Okay, the final video. So uh, as I said, have fun. And guys, this is a really important part, right? So don't, don't leave the fun out. First of all, I like to have fun at work. And second of all, that, that video with the cup, uh, it, it just creates, it was actually kind of a, like a viral hit inside of Mercedes. And so people talk about it. So it's good for you, right? And uh, we just, two weeks ago, we made the second part, like part two of this video. But I can't show it to you because it's not cut yet, but then maybe next time, right? And so here, we did another video with uh, GitHub. Uh, GitHub is one of our trusted partners. Uh, this is a, it's a bit of a commercial Mercedes GitHub, yeah? We also add Mercedes-Benz Benz R and D. For example, we're also using another big platform for open source. So, right, we're not just GitHub, but enterprise IT is on GitHub. And so, this is a one-minute version. There is a five-minute version coming soon. Not published yet. This is just recently uh, been been published. So, here we go. Happens to a large degree in the open source domain these days. You want to be part of that. You should be part of open source. If you look at a Mercedes-Benz car, it is packed with open source components. So it's just natural for us to collaborate with others and open source is the best model to do that. In enterprise IT, we have decided to go all on GitHub because it helps us to share the code internally and work with the open source world. 
everyone knows GitHub. Yeah, so the biggest platform out there and that is for us a huge advantage because we do not have to explain GitHub itself. We can concentrate on the stuff that we do with that. GitHub is for us a platform which integrates every need we have around code, around configuration, about doing our job, building the systems. So we have one platform that integrates easily and that reduces time and gives us the transparency we need. What we automated with GitHub Action is how we build the code. We do the software engineering, we test it, we simulate it, and GitHub is our core tool to make that work. Okay, so the five minute version is actually a funnier as well, because in a one minute short version, you can't put all the jokes in there, but it was great fun to do the video. So, right, do it. Uh, here, this is my CEO asked me to show this as well. We're hiring <laughs> in, in case you're looking for a job and, or you know someone. And uh, I know everybody's hiring, but, but we're really cool. <laughs> and uh, we have great products. Okay, so uh, Mercedes-Benz Tech Innovation, also, of course, the mother company, Mercedes-Benz AG. Thank you, guys, and may there always be winning your sales. Thank you.